Youth and the power of change. In recent times, we have seen an uprising of young Nigerians and Africans in a never before experienced uproar, occasioned by the protracted seeming inability of governments to provide an enabling environment for young people to thrive. As a development consultant, every day, I engage scores of young people in discussions hinged on their personal ambitions, career projections, and general pulse about life and living in Nigeria. Needless to say, 10 out of 10 young people live in abject despondency concerning their ambitions and dreams in Nigeria. In my work engagements too, I have had reason to interact with the top echelon of society, the so-called big men and women. The disparity in living circumstances between these two groups is not only glaringly alarming, the dissonant gaps that exist between these demographic divides seems to have no bridging in sight. With an arguably eroded middle class, Nigeria presents at best a morbidly unwell social construct, which if not urgently checked will result in, I reserve my comments. I do not necessarily want to delve into the myriad mental health issues that these feelings of utter hopelessness produce. But my focus today lies in the question, how can young people galvanize their power and collective goodwill toward engaging the socio-economic, political, and structural systems of Nigeria as a whole? Galvanizing same in order to produce an Eldorado of sorts, or at the very least, a land they can be proud to call their own. A land that gives them hope for today and assurance for the future. A place where dreams are not daily met with the possibility of death. A country where the aspirations of young people are not too easily crushed by the seeming indifference of successive governments to the plight of their greatest strengths, the youth. Much as we may want to move away quickly from the horrors that till the end SARS protests, this phenomenal expression of the strength, unity, and glory of youth, in my opinion, should be properly harnessed and channeled to outputs and outcomes that not only provide a pedestal for positive youth engagement, but ultimately change systems, improved governance, and consequently improved life outcomes for the people. Sadly, it seems our youth find greater satisfaction with simple campaigns, some of which are violent, aggressive exchange, and a never-ending cycle of mob action. While these are somewhat applied and found to be commonplace as expressions of quest for change globally, what next becomes the question after all of the upheaval? How do we channel the voice of youth unrest into outright, tangible, productive, and sustainable change in Nigeria, Africa, and the world at large. Quite an interesting read. And Mr. Yemi, what do you think about this conversation, uh, especially as a Nigerian who is based in the UK? What's your opinion or perspectives on this issue? No, it's a, it's a good point. And I like the fact that he briefly touched on, on NSAS without going into detail. Uh, but we saw what can be achieved when people come together for, um, you know, a plan. We see, we saw unity. We saw the use of social media and technology. We saw uh, large sections of people um, from a certain age demographic um, coming together uh, to for a common purpose uh, with, 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 with the demonstrations and protests that went, went on. But to your question, how can, it be, um, how can it be challenged? You can only, I think you can, you, to, to get to the future, you have to understand the past first and foremost, and then align and change the present to get to the future. If you try, as, if, you, if you, you can't do it with, will, with willpower alone, uh, but we know that the youth have the ideas, they have the energy, they have the creativity, they have the innovation, they have the imagination, and they have hope. Um, 
what they don't have is experience. Uh, and I feel, you know, in a country like Nigeria, if you rush that change, it might not end uh, too well, like like one of the other advocates uh, said, it has to be something that you have to have a plan, a, a long-term vision uh, with a, not so much emotion, a little bit of emotion because you are aggrieved about certain things not working properly, but you have to have a plan in terms of, okay, how do you want to represent yourself? Do you have a 10-year plan to say, okay, like uh, the other advocate said, let's start from the bottom up and the top-down approach. Do we want to take some certain seats in some certain elections because we want to have political power and then grow that over a period of maybe two or three election cycles. Because you don't, if you just channel all your anger to the streets, uh, you don't want a situation where it ends in, in violence, whether it's state, state sponsored or, or otherwise. I think in the last um, few years, we have seen the youth show their own um, concerns and uh, you know their apathy to certain actions within the state. But I think that has to be channeled um, you, you, youth advocate groups around the country are being formed, they have been formed, and perhaps is want to go back um, and then learn the lessons of the past and look for a new way forward. I, I think in my view, what is most pertinent is after looking at the kind of directions and things that have happened in Nigeria, especially during the NSARS, the NSARS situation it's something most people did not know. Yeah, you got a lot of people in Lagos, in different states, on the streets. But do you know that that number is enough to recall this entire State House of Assembly in Lagos and in all those other states? Mm. So I believe political literacy is key mm. to moving forward. It's hard to explain to Nigerians when you tell them, okay, you're not politically literate enough. Mm -hmm. But imagine if they took out... That's um, by recalling. That's what I mean by the takeout. Yeah. Took out the entire state house I mean, of you assembly. Need to clarify no, that. I have to clarify that. <laughs> so if they took out the the entire state house of assembly, yeah. you can take out a governor or you can impeach a governor for inaction. Mm. Yeah. And that will send a message to the centre they will never forget. Yeah. We need to understand the constitution, how our country works, and what exactly could work. So, looking at the Aram Spring and Co., yes, there's the front, which looks like the agitation streets, but there's also the strategic at the back end, the back end. Yeah. and I think that's what's missing. Okay, Nigeria. exactly. I think I agree with you, especially that the fact that the problem when it comes to youth participation is the fact that we're missing out on the strategic part. Now, this is what happened during the NSAS campaign. A vast majority of young people were on the streets, but the vast majority of people in the corridors of power were older people, right? Right. Because the truth is, for the interests of the youth to be represented, let's come to the reality. The youth must be there to represent mm -hmm. their interests. Mm -hmm. So the solution yeah. is simple. Young people have to start getting involved, right? You talk to an average young person in Nigeria, he or she feels governance is not their business. Politics is not their business. He or she has visions of becoming CEOs of companies, becoming things. But when it comes to politics, you discover that young persons walk away from politics. Right. Those people there are, like you said earlier, occupying political position, and they will represent their own interest mm -hmm. until they are no longer there. So I but think it's an organic process, right. right? Young people need to start getting involved in politics from the grassroots because it will always get to a power is never given. It has to yeah, be taken. It's taken. Yeah. And I believe that's where he mentioned about political literacy. Yeah. I think that's the first mm -hmm. step. When people understand the correct process, how to go about things, during the NSAS advocacy, I was constantly on, you know, speaking on the need to engage strategy. Yeah. You know, it's like in development, you have programs and you have a project. Yeah. Now, the project is what gives longevity and sustainability to the programs that you do. So your programs are like activities that you carry out. Yeah. But that alone cannot stand and bring structural change like we, you know, we deserve. And like you've, you've mentioned, which is something I realized during the NSAS protest, the refusal of the young people to come to the negotiation table. Yeah. The truth is, except you're going to have a coup d'etat, even if it's the <laughs> devil that is sitting on that table, 
you have to engage yeah. the powers that be. And it has to be systemic, it has to be strategic, and it has to be with the goal of sustainable you know, change. Yeah, and it was difficult during change. the NSAS campaign it because was. we are now depending on Twitter influencers right. to engage That's the government. Activity. Because they you know what you know what I find uh, most odd about the whole matter. I remember a common saying during the NSAS, and when I saw it, I was really hurt. And it meant uh, what the old people cannot see. We will use drone, and everybody joked about it. Right. And I was like, come, this, this, is a, this is an IT generation. Yeah. You know that a drone can only go where the mind of the person All controlling right. it knows. Yeah. So it doesn't change. And actually, this statement came from someone who's serving in government who is older. So he was, he was even mocking mm. the fact they taught in that process. Yeah. Yeah. Let's understand. The people in power right now, and I heard this when I was in dinner in South South, and I was with some politicians, and they said something to me. We took over power from our fathers who didn't go to university and who lived in a hamlet. I said, we were schooled in America, ETC. Do you think you want to take power from us with university degrees? You're going to come with, without a plan? Oh, well, <laughs> time is never our friend on this program. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook. That's Plus TV Africa with the hashtag TheAdvocateNG or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa with the same hashtag, the Advocates NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, you may log on to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash the Advocates NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station. Remember, the important conversations are among the necessary tools for a saner society. Bye for now. Bye.